Hello everyone, Kyle here from Wide Awake PH, and in today's episode, we'll be telling you the three reasons why you should not buy an espresso machine. For many coffee lovers out there, is there a more romantic idea than owning an espresso machine and having it at home? The ability to brew up cafe quality drinks, serve it to your friends and family, and impress them with latte art is such an appealing idea. But after owning an espresso machine myself for the past few years, I'll be telling you why mm, it might not be such a good idea. The first issue I have with owning an espresso machine is that making delicious espresso-based coffee at home is very time-consuming. There are many sub-points to time-consuming, and one is the warm-up time. So all espresso machines need to be warmed up and the warm-up routine or procedure varies depending on the machine you have and that could take anywhere from 10 minutes to 45 minutes so for example i have a lelit mara at home that is a classic heat exchange machine and to warm that up i need to wait 30 to 45 minutes after turning on before i can use it to make delicious espresso why is that well, if we don't properly warm up the group head, that group head will act as a heat sink. So our brew water that has to be pretty hot to, to efficiently extract espresso will end up you know, being cooler than what we need it to be. So we need to wait for that group head to get up to temperature before we can pull a shot or else our espresso will end up tasting under extracted or sour another example let's say you're using a manual espresso machine like the like the flare 58 so with a machine like that what you need to do is you need to properly warm up that tiny group head and in order to do so you have to do manually right you have the option to either pour boiling water into that group head two to three times in order for that thing to get up to temperature or place that place that group head on top of a boiling um, kettle so that the group head will be hot enough for you to brew with it properly. And as you can imagine, these steps, these waiting times, adds a lot of friction to your everyday espresso routine. So with the two examples I just mentioned, warming up a traditional espresso machine, heat exchange machine, and the flare, you can imagine that you know, for the, for the espresso machine, waiting 30 minutes for that to properly warm up. And for the lever machine, manually having to warm that up takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort. And that's something that you need to consider if you want to get an espresso machine for yourself. Another aspect that makes espresso making at home so time consuming is that learning how to make the espresso taste the way you want it to taste also known as dialing in, is a pretty time-consuming process. This process takes a lot of skill, practice, and understanding in the fundamentals of espresso brewing. I think that your favorite neighborhood cafe barista makes pulling your shots look so easy. But in reality, there's a lot of rigor behind the scenes going on in there. This is because dialing in espresso is a pretty finicky process. You see, when we're brewing espresso, we're grinding our coffee really, really fine. And we're making what is essentially a concentrated dose of coffee. So you can imagine that every little adjustment we make really affects the brew and how it will taste. So in order to get tasty results, you really need to understand the relationship between time temperature, grind size, pressure, and flow rate. And what that means is making great espresso at home is a skill set and that will require a time commitment from you because you need to practice and you need to read about these things. The second reason why you shouldn't own an espresso machine at home is that it's not the most consistent experience. Okay, so here's a frustrating issue. Let's say You've taken the time to learn about the theory of espresso making. 
you've practiced a lot, and you're pretty confident with your skills. But you realize, well, I just did the exact same recipe. Why doesn't my coffee taste exactly the same? What am I doing wrong? Well, you're not alone because this has happened to me multiple times, and I think it's part of the game. In my experience, there are two reasons for this. One, your beans will age. And as your bean ages, the way they brew up in your espresso machine also changes. So in practice, what that means is you'll have to dial in your, your coffee beans every couple of days so that it's within your preferences or within your flavor preferences. The second issue is related to the equipment of your choice or your current espresso setup. So either your espresso machine or your grinder. So the thing is with espresso, the more you pay for your espresso equipment, the better performing or the more consistent and easily ma manipulated these machines are. So if you're rocking a more budget setup, then uh, variability will kind of be always in the equation when you're brewing espresso. And that has definitely been my experience with the Lilith Mara. If you guys are interested in a long-term review of the Lilith Mara, please say it down in the comments below and then we'll be sure to make one for you. And it's important to note that the issue of not being very consistent happens even when you're using the same bead. So you can only imagine how nightmarish it would be if you're the type of person who likes using different beans or different origins or different blends for that matter. Well, if that's the case, then you have to be prepared to continuously dial in all those coffees to get it to the, to the taste that you want. So in practice, that would mean you'd have to waste a couple of shots worth of each coffee before you get a really delicious result. The third reason why owning an espresso machine may not be right for you is that it can get very expensive. You see, if you want the most repeatable, consistent, and therefore most enjoyable espresso experience, then you would need to invest in a relatively high-end setup. Because as mentioned earlier, the more money you pay for your espresso machine, then typically the more features you get in return. And these features are very important for the repeatability and for your overall espresso experience. So after owning an espresso machine for around three years now, I'd say the features that you want to be looking out for when shopping for your own higher end setup is a machine that can accurately and consistently adjust brew temperature and pressure or flow rate. With these two features, you can really get good consistency from shot to shot. And then you won't have to second guess yourself with your brewing parameters. And this makes learning how to brew espresso and then consequently dialing in really, really easy. Or easier, relatively speaking. In today's market, I'd recommend the Decent Espresso Machine, the Lelit Bianca, or maybe even the Breville Dual Boiler if you're somewhat on the budget. The problem with going with a lower-end machine such as my Lelit Mara is that it takes a higher level of skill to use and it, ne it needs your own personal experience with the machine in order to maximize the results with it. So this is because with my Lelit Mara, there is no way to directly control the temperature or the pressure and flow rate. So to get good espresso, I needed to learn how the Lelit Mara behaves, how, how to manipulate the machine so that I get the right brewing temperature. It's not just like a set it and forget it kind of thing. I need to do a heat exchange flush, which you can YouTube or I'll link it down in the description below in order for me to get a pretty good temperature for my brew. Also, I'm fixed at the stock factory setting of 9 bar. So I don't get to really explore pressure profiling uh, and that kind of flavor profile that those kinds of shots would give you. Unlike the machines I recommended, 
which allows you to really fine tune the temperature and even play around with the pressure and flow rate. And those features will really let you explore the wonderful world of espresso. Like for me, if I could turn back time and choose an espresso machine again, I would have opted for the decent espresso machine instead of my Lelit Mara, even if it costs around two times more money. I think saving up more money and then have and then opting for that machine instead would have made my espresso life a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. So there you have it. That's the three reasons why you shouldn't own an espresso machine. It's time consuming, it's inconsistent, and it can be very expensive. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.